everyone. Um, Scott Mitty's story here. We have a pretty long-term project that we are working on that we want to start showing you guys what we're doing. To give you a bit of history, we built our house on this property 27 years ago. It'll be 27 years ago, September 1st is when we actually moved in. And on this property has been this two-car detached garage, which we refer to it as the barn because it's easier to say barn and garage versus attached garage, detached garage. So we just refer to it as the barn. And so, um, yeah, we've had this building. We've done nothing with it. Beforehand, it was, before we moved here. It um, was used by uh, Mr. Richards. He had an auto body shop in here. And uh, we're still finding all the electronic, uh, the electrical hookups and uh, stuff that's hung all around. And in fact, it had a bunch of uh, windshield wipers. Oh, it was ankle deep in windshield wiper blades when we first started building our house. Plus other people, neighbors, had put stuff in here to store with right. Grandpa's permission. So, And then there was also just the two-car garage. There was also a what we called the lean-to, but it was like his office area yeah, it was on a this stick, side. It was a stick-built little workshop, mm -hmm. uh, about a third of the whole building, in fact. Uh, that was off over here and over the decades that has rotted down in fact it was it was totally open when we got here and I handmade windows mm -hmm. and, and we put a door on the front and of it. we put a door but it just it rotted down and the thing is is so we never really knew what we wanted to do with this building it like I said it's just a cat but it's a catch-all and you're gonna see video and hear what I mean like it was a catch-all full of junk and everything but um, so Scott and I got to talking about it and there's certain things that we've always wanted well not always want to do what we've wanted to do in the last few years and one of them is Scott learning how to do blacksmithing mm -hmm. and so yeah and that's been a fascination of mine for a long time I've I've taken a few classes on it and uh, and studied on it quite a bit but this outside operation is a great place to begin a, a blacksmith shop. Uh, we were a little iffy about doing it in the attached garage. Yeah, we don't want to burn our house down. Yeah, uh, and it's the same for welding. Uh, I've been learning how to weld and not real comfortable doing that inside. Also, having it a, gar a garage where you're parking vehicles in it all the time and it's not a small garage it's a 24 by 24 but if you wanted to have workshop space you always have to pull the cars out mm -hmm. to do anything yeah it's never been convenient no so having this building this building is what 25 by 40 uh by 36 something well let's just say round it off uh, roughly 25 by 40 and there's two huge garage doors on the front which we're going to fill in Mm -hmm. But this video basically is us starting the project. And in the beginning of May, I took a few days off work. We had a construction dumpster um, delivered here. And we started emptying the building. And Yeah. In fact, we filled two construction dumpsters to the brim. Well, one of them was mostly the crap on the inside of the building. Um, we did have a little pile, and you'll see that in pictures um, over here at the side. But... The lean-to part was the hardest part to get down. You know, it's funny. For years, we have been talking about, oh, this thing is on the verge of collapse. It's rotting. That son of a gun was built to last, even though it was sagging and, and everything. Well, Mr. Richards, it was a typical, you know, he was a farmer as well as what he did. And like, I grew up around farmers. Me he too. used everything that he had at hand, but he over-engineered it, it would last. And nothing was square. No. <laughs> there was nothing apart this, but matter of fact, the poles here now, the back one here is pretty much straight up and down. And then as you get to the middle one, it leans out a little bit. And as you get to the next one, it leans a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So we're squaring it up as we're framing and everything. Right. But this video basically is talking, or is just showing you what we did to completely gut this building, get rid of the lean-to part or the office part, whatever you want to call it, to get ready to start actually 
remodeling and building the building. Well, we had to get rid of the crap before we could start to put the good stuff in. Well, and I think it's worth mentioning the, the history prior to us. Um, it looks like before 1967, this was a much smaller footprint mm -hmm. building, and we guessed most likely uh, a chicken coop, um, or maybe a small hog operation. I don't know. Yeah, hard to say, but it's about half the size of what it is. And then in 1967, he enlarged the footprint considerably on all sides. And then I'm not sure if he did it at the same time or later, but in 1967, then he added what would become the uh, shed. Right, the lean-to, whatever. Yeah. And he actually, the front part of it, because of driving vehicles in here, the front part of it actually you come to the edge of this pad and then the next section actually goes down, which we're gonna to have to fill in and bring it back up to level with the, the main pad that's here. And the concrete floor, I mean, there's a few cracks and stuff in here, but for a 50 plus year old concrete floor, it's not in that bad a shape. No, no. And it's, it's interesting too. We know it was Mr. Richards because when I worked in Greenfield for Hancock County Abstract, I met uh, a lot of his grandkids. And to them, this was always the Richards farm. Mm -hmm. So um, that and other evidence kind of led us to understand. Well, and I, your grandfather bought it from the Richards. You know, mom thinks they bought it from some a woman named Smith. Really? Because your grandpa told us that he bought it from the Richards. Well, she could have been a, Smith, a Richard. I don't know. Well, she did. The daughter did get married. Maybe she married a Smith. Anyways, so you're going to be taking on the journey of what we're going to be doing this. Now, this journey is going to be over a year long because we're doing things as we have the money. Um, as you can see back here, you'll see this in another video of us starting to frame it in. Uh, we're having the roof replaced. Um, the, where the two big garage doors are, those are going to be filled in. We're going to put a, um, a wall, a uh, dividing wall. Two-thirds of this is going to be blacksmith woods working shop and... One third of it is going to be a dye studio for me. <laughs> I'm finally going to get a dye house. Uh, it means I don't have to do all this stuff on my kitchen stove. I can bring it out here, make all the mess I want. Don't worry about it. Um, there's not going to be any water out here. Um, we've got a garden hose with a spigot right at the back of the house, which is not that far from here. So if I need to run water out here or Scott needs to run out, we're just going to use garden hoses. Um, there's no reason to put water in here. Uh, we are talking about putting a small bathroom in, but just using like a nature's head composting toilet um, so we don't have to worry about water pipes freezing in the winter. We are going to put a furnace in here, but it's like in the winter time, it's going to be kept at like 50 degrees or something like that just to keep things. And also, if we want to come out here and work in the winter time, it's not that much to raise the temperature up, especially if you're going to have blacksmithing and forges and stuff out here. That will really do it too. So anyways, this video is the demo, and uh, we'll be showing you what we're doing as we're doing it. So on with the video. Just wanted to show you what the building looked like before we began demoing it. As you can see, it's not in the best of shapes. So here we go. Like we mentioned earlier, the building was in the process of collapsing. Also, it was just full of junk. It was a catch-all for things that we didn't know what to do with. And yes, there's a light coming in through the roof back there because the roof is in the process of collapsing. This is the 20-yard construction dumpster that was delivered. We thought that <laughs> it would hold all the trash uh, needed, but as it turned out, we filled this one to the brim and then another one entirely to the brim. That is a lot of junk we cleaned out. It was epic. The first dumpster was full of uh, refuse that we cleaned up from the barn and there was a little bit of everything. Uh, decades worth of stuff. Uh, the second dumpster mostly revolved around tearing down the lean-to and that was really rotten wood. At the end of the first day of cleaning up, we tried to get the lean-to part to collapse a little bit, and we did get the roof down. Um, 
this is what it looked like beginning the second day of cleanup. As you can see, there was still stuff inside the barn that needed to be done. And there's the second construction dumpster. We also had a fire going to burn as much as the rotten lumber as we could get because we saw no reason to put all of that wood in the dumpster if it could be burnt. And it took us all day to get all of that cleaned out. That roof on the lean-to part was a pain in the took us to get down. We ended up actually taking the a saw and cutting it up into little bitty pieces to get it on the dumpster. But there it is. It's gone and we're happy and the dumpster's full. And here it is all done, cleaned up, and the end is open and we're ready to start framing on this side. So doesn't this look nice? I mean, especially compared to what it looked like when we started. So Thank you for coming along on this part of the journey, and we'll talk to you later.